Hi everybody, it's Peter here, Precision Fit Golf. Hope you're all keeping well. This evening's discussion is around driver loft and the benefits of having more loft. Now, a lot of you starting off new to the game might have been told that maybe 9 and 10 degrees is the way to go for accuracy. It is actually quite the opposite. The more loft that you have, the more accurate you will be. So let's discuss that a bit further. So guys, yeah, driver loft. Um, why is it important? It's important, I suppose, for two main reasons. If you want to carry the ball further um, without changing your setup too much, okay? And the second thing is obviously it's important for accuracy, right? Can't reiterate that enough, okay? If I get into it immediately, um, there is a well-known American golfer who transitioned onto the Live Tour a number of years ago. He's one of the first guys to go, has a reputation of being a big hitter, a tall guy. You know who I'm talking about. I don't have to say who he is. He tends to tee the ball quite low, guys. So if you ever watch him on TV, what you'd notice is that his ball is effectively like down that low. Like I'm not joking you. It has to be probably more or less top of the ball level with top of the club head, right? That particular golf in question is using 11 and a half degrees loft. Now I know you might find that hard to believe, but if you if you dig deep or if you're even coming to see us here in the studio, I will actually show you the video where he says that, and it is intriguing to hear that. And he even says firsthand it's because it helps you to become more accurate. Okay. The second thing I want to talk to you about driver loft is obviously the fact that if you pick a dedicated driver with say maybe 12 degrees or 10 and a half from the start and obviously we've discussed that you can modify the face angle in the loft based on the manufacturer with the adapter right that's that's discussion from previously okay but what they don't tell you is when you buy a driver is that the face of the driver is actually curved so I don't know if you can actually see that I'll try and get this in as close as I can I'm going to try and put that ruler maybe somewhere close to the middle what you may be able to see is you may be able to see a little gap at the top and you'll also see a little gap at the bottom. And the reason is because the face is curved from top to bottom, okay? What does that mean? Why is it important? It's important because if there's 11 and a half in the middle of the face, it means there could be anything up on 13, 14, even 15 near the top of the face. That's important for you because you often hear situations where guys are saying they like to tee the ball high. If you tee the ball high and the shaft is not, is not optimum to you, you're going to catch it more on the top of the face where you create more backspin. The more backspin you get on the driver, the more the ball will fly higher and spin more. And suddenly you're getting a flight that's not penetrating. You're losing distance. Okay. Consequently, if you tee the ball lower and the ball is down too low, suddenly that 11 and a half could be more like nine degrees. You suddenly get a lower flight and then you're losing your potential in terms of overall distance. Okay. It's also not the best feeling in the world to hit a ball low in the face. Okay. Driver, once again, so middle of the face, plenty of loft, helps you to hit the ball more accurately, okay? Can't reiterate that enough. Ball position, as I said, you will typically put the ball off the inside of your heel, which is what you see a lot of professional golfers doing, and that is because, once again, they're using a particular loft. They don't tee the ball as high because with the club head speed that they have, anything up on, say, 11, 11 and a half, 12 degrees with their club face and lovely positive attack angle to get a lovely flight maybe around maybe 15, 16, 17 degrees, high launch, low spin, penetrating, moves down range quite well, right? Okay. And that's why I'm saying to you, just for that high handicap golfer, it's important that you have uh, more loft from the beginning because you don't have professional golfer speed. I'm going to throw another curveball in here. Is this something that you may not be aware of? Okay. And that is that all manufacturers with their clubs will typically have tolerance, okay? What's a tolerance? A tolerance means that when they go to manufacture a club head, they will do their best to make sure that that club head is coming out at 10 and a half degrees. But if you look at the small print, and if you dig deep enough, you will actually find it, okay? In some instances, you can be up as much as two or three, plus or minus two or three degrees, which means you could buy a head that says 10 and a half on the label, but if you get a club maker to measure it, it could be anything, it, you know, it could be spot on, but in some cases, it could be 13, and in some cases, it could be 8. As we discovered a number of months ago, two customers that came in that had issues. One couldn't get the ball airborne. The other guy was getting the ball too high. And what we discovered, with they were both American brands, widely known uh, on tour, okay? Um, the first driver was indicated as being 9.5 degrees on the loft, on the head. The client had the adapter set up to plus 1.5, which gave us about 11 degrees, okay? But when we actually measured the club head on their uh, loft and line machine, the club head was only measuring about 7.5 degrees. So that explains why he couldn't get it 
off on the flight that he wants because it didn't have enough loft. It said nine and a half, but it wasn't nine and a half. And that because of the tolerances once again. The other kind, like I said, a 10 and a half degree driver head, but when we measure it, we discovered that it was 13 degrees. So that explained why he was hitting the ball so high, okay? Just to touch base on those things again, lads. So once again, it is important to have enough loft from the beginning, okay? It's accurate. If you look at the two video clips that I'm about to show you, it's just an example, a perfect example of this. I can't highlight this enough to you. It's my own driver at 12 degrees, okay, with the shaft that I currently use, okay. I also have the 10 and a half degree version for, for fitting purposes. So if someone comes in, they've got a bit more speed. They don't necessarily need 12 degrees. 10 and a half might be adequate, okay, depending on the accuracy they want. But if you look at the two shots, you will see with the 10 and a half degree, it's lower by at least two or three degrees. It's less accurate because it's turning over a little bit more, okay. Fast forward to the shot that I've actually hit with my own 12 degree head. And you can see I'm nearly up on maybe 13 or 14 degrees of launch at that stage, launch angle. And you can see the spin is more or less the same. The ball speed and club head speed are both the same, okay? But you can see how much further that ball is actually going because it's launching higher. Now, I use the Pro V1 for the test. And the reason is because with higher launch conditions, it is better to have maybe a slightly firmer ball based on your club head speed. If you're swinging slower, then a mid-compression ball might suit you better because you want something that climbs a little bit higher, okay? So once again, like I said, remember, the face of your driver is not, it's not straight. It's actually curved. And if you tee the ball too high or too low, it will affect your flight. Get a driver head that has enough loft from the beginning because it makes it more accurate to hit the ball in the direction that you want. Thirdly, put that ball, like I said, typically inside your heel. If you're like me, where you push the ball forward, it takes a little bit of practice because if you push it too far forward, even though it's a high tee, you can catch it slightly on the up and hit it poorly. Consequently, if it's too far back and the club is coming down, you can hit underneath it and propel it up into the sky, okay? How do you know these things? Come and talk to a professional club maker. We can measure the loft of the club that you're interested in. We'll talk about things like ball speed, club head speed, club face angle, like we've discussed before, okay? Really, really important, right? I hope you found this interesting, like I said, and if you do have issues with your driver, come and talk to your professional club maker. That is what we're here for. We're here to help you. Like we're highly trained individuals. The thing is we've trained to a decent level, much higher than what you see in a retail situation, and we will give you the best advice, get you out onto the course and driving the ball better than you ever have, okay? Pleasure once again to haunt you. Enjoy the next major coming up. I think it is the US PGA. And like I said, we'll talk to you next few weeks. We'll change the subject, Vic. We'll probably get onto maybe something around irons, uh, maybe even wedges, who knows? We just see what the mood is at the time and what takes us, and we shall go from there. Enjoy the week ahead, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.